Well, all of a sudden this COVID-19 thing hit and nobody could go to church. Well, I've already been there. And a lot of Christians that love Jesus and were therefore kicked out of the local church because of, of corruption, that the Sunday morning thing anyway, um, they didn't skip a beat when all of a sudden people couldn't go to church. And all of a sudden, everyone had to start being church. And we discovered that Jesus doesn't live in a box consigned to Sunday morning. And some people who needed money from that system... Uh, let's just say that they they do have a conflict of interest and they, they have motive for arguing that uh, it remains necessary even though it might not necessarily be. I live in the world of tomorrow. My slogan is today's news yesterday. I saw it coming. I started having trouble with church way back in 2003. George Barna started observing in his research millions of Americans who left Sunday morning in order to get closer to Jesus. That's 2005, the uh, Barna Revolution. The, the entire Christian body seems to have operated with the assumption that there is always a good and healthy local church within Sunday morning driving distance of everybody in the world. And therefore, if you do not attend one of these Sunday morning things, you don't love Jesus. And it's, it's a test of Christians deciding if other Christians love Jesus or not, because that's so important for us to judge each other, right? Well, I, I beg to differ. Um, it is not for granted that there is always a wonderful, thriving local church thing for Sunday morning within driving distance that we are always better off from attending. The Great Commission hasn't been fulfilled yet. The, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, but it isn't there yet. There's still more places to spread the gospel. There are places in the world that do not have a local church thing Sunday morning within driving distance, even in America. There might be a local church thing, but I, let's, let's look at an interesting uh, case study, for example. A lot of pastors couldn't stop bad-mouthing Rob Bell around 2007. Well, just a few years before that, in 2005, if, if, if one of those pastor's friends was attending at Rob Bell's church in Granville, Michigan, Mars Hill Bible Church, I've been there several times, if, if, if a Christian was going to that, then the pastor might think, oh, you're a good Christian. You go to a church. But then a few years later, we're all bad-mouthing Rob Bell. Well, that Christian going to Rob Bell's church, who wasn't bad then but is bad now, was that good or not? I, 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 pardon me if you didn't quite catch that, but there's a massive contradiction. Pastors want someone to go to a local church, but then they'll bad-mouth the pastors a few years later. So which one is it? When people have to go to Sunday morning, it, it's, it's like there's lack of accountability from the leaders. It's like having a captive audience. And in order to keep the students, they don't have to be worthy because after all, if you leave us, then you're going to burn in hell because you hate Jesus. And that's always hanging over everybody's heads. So they manage to keep a captive audience and then they don't do well. It, it, it's, like a, it's like a company locked into a government contract. There is no competition, there's no need to improve and stay worthy, and there's lots of money that gets wasted. The idea of the church existing outside of Sunday morning isn't wonderfully new. It's been around. The big problem is that we have to get our Bible education from somewhere. The local church Sunday morning thing wasn't necessarily evil. We're not supposed to hate history and be judges against history. We didn't have internet a hundred years ago. The only way to learn good Bible knowledge was to go to the local chapel where there was a man preaching who had spent a lot of time studying and might have been one of the smartest people in town. Oh, there, there's line. I've, I've got a friend asking me Bible questions today over here in Taiwan and his messages are coming through now. And I'm teaching him about Jesus without church here in Taiwan. See, after, after everybody in COVID all of a sudden had to do Jesus without driving to Sunday morning, 
um, they discovered that there are ways to find Jesus elsewhere. I already had that happen when I came to Asia. I've been in Taiwan almost 12 years and uh, I've had a very interesting situation. Uh, I began to realize other things. I've talked about Confucianism in my podcasts and stuff. It comes from Confucius. We think Confucius is wonderful for the cute little quotes that the Chinese government wants us to hear about in the West. Actually, Confucius was all about dogma to family and government and teaching institutions, schools. And, and th that was his thesis. The other little quotes that we get from Confucius, anybody could say those. The, you know, Jesus had the message of forgiveness and Buddha had the message of acceptance and, and everyone had their different messages. Socrates had the message of asking why behind why. And, and Plato had his cave or whatever. Well, Confucius, his main thesis was that we must have dogma to parents and teachers and government. And if you ask why, that is rebellion. The only reason why is because they said, you are a bad person if you ask why. They say this directly and they punish people today in Taiwan, in the classroom, in the home for this. How can you apologize, repent, forgive, and reconcile and mend broken friendships with that hanging over your head? The Chinese word for this is xiaoshun. It's dogma to family and leaders. And they call that respect. If a student asks a teacher why, that is disrespectful and rebellious. And they tell it to you this way. That really is all that Confucius was about. Now, along the way, he said a bunch of good things that everybody says. But th th those, those good ideas that Confucius said that we quote him for are not Confucian philosophy. That's just human. Confucius was all about mind control and the inability to forgive. And through the years, even to this day in Chinese culture, including Hong Kong, in Taiwan, Malaysia, in, in, in Chinese churches in America, the pastors will not confront the direct issue of forgiveness. Even, even, even among ABCs, like American born Chinese, it's, um, it's, a, it's a massive scandal that the West is just discovering. They don't let go of the, the, the Confucius premise that forgiveness is impossible, therefore you should never try it. And even the missionary schools in America know about this and tell our missionaries, don't confront it when you run into this problem in, in Chinese culture. It's, it's amazing, it's a massive scandal and it's, it's being exposed uh, just now. And I've been seeing it go on. Well, I couldn't participate in, in local churches in Taiwan because they teach against the action of forgiveness. They talk about forgiveness, but when it's time to do it, when it's time to do Matthew 18 for love and, and restoring friendship, they hate it. They run away from it. They gossip about you behind your back every single time, every time. So I had to live outside of that here in Taiwan. And so have other Christians who, who've been talking to me. I want to know Jesus. I want to know forgiveness. And I just can't get that from the local churches. Yup. And so, you know, my, my phone's going off with, with kids asking me questions about Jesus. Uh, maybe Taiwan will get it. That's not my point. I've had to live outside of local church since I've been in Taiwan because the earth is not full of the knowledge of the Lord yet. So as, as we're all learning from each other, I'm taking my responsibility and I'm, I'm going to start doing some more videos. Uh, I'm, I'm one of my favorite things to do with Taiwanese is read through the book of Genesis. It's one of my favorite books. Um, I've, I've been writing about this for a while. I, I've, I've been experiencing this a while. I've had, had it coming, seen it coming. Books.jesse.house. Not .com, just books.jesse.house. And, and I've got a number of books that are there. I translated the book of Revelation from Greek. The idea was you don't need an end time study guide. Just have a good translation of Revelation. You know, just a, a great translation. It's 10,000 words. I wrote another book, 100,000 words, on why I translated it that way. Uh, I haven't had it reviewed yet. Maybe if someone wants me to get an honorary master's degree or something, I'll, I'll, I'll ask someone to review it or I, I don't know. But I've, 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 in doing Bible translation, I felt it was responsible to, to do my math, so to speak, and talk about why I translated it that way. So there's, there's Revelation translation notes. Um, my translation is called The End. Um, I've written other books. I've written a theology book so people can, can study theology that way. It's got many more scripture references than the textbooks I studied theology in in college. Um, I've, I've done some things. I've wrote a devotional called Watch, Stand, Pray 365. 
um, I've got some books that are out there. They're free if you go to Smashwords in, in certain cases, um, up to the first thousand books anyway. Um, you can buy them in print. Um, but I'm, I'm going to start doing more videos on YouTube just to talk about this. And uh, I don't know who's going to watch it. Um, I just think that it's the responsible thing to start doing. I'm going to cut this off so we all can get back to our lives, yourself included. Uh, love you and uh, see you when we pick up.